Good morning everybody. It is Monday morning. It is the 8th of June and it's another glorious day as you can see from the sunlight coming through the windows um, onto my face. Just thought I'd come down to church this morning just to stream from there just to give you a bit different background for a change. But we're going to read God's word together. So we're going to read Acts chapter 26 this morning. So let's read this together. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you may speak in your defence. So Paul gestured with his hand, started his defence. I am fortunate, King Agrippa, that you are the one hearing my defence today against all these accusers, all accusations made by Jewish leaders. For I know you are an expert on all Jewish customs and contro controversies. Now, please listen to me patiently. As the Jewish leaders are well aware, I was given a thorough Jewish training from my earliest childhood among my own people and in Jerusalem. If they would admit it, they know that I have been a member of the Pharisees, the strictest sect of our religion. Now I am on trial because of my hope in the fulfillment of God's promise made to our ancestors. In fact, that is why the 12 tribes of Israel zealously worship God night and day, and they share the same hope I have. Yet, Your Majesty, they accuse me for having this hope. Why does it seem incredible to any of you that God can raise the dead? I used to believe that I ought to do everything I could to oppose the very name of Jesus the Nazarene. Indeed, I did just that in Jerusalem. Authorised by the leading priests, I caused many believers there to be sent to prison. I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Many times I had them punished in the synagogues to get them to curse Jesus. I was so violently opposed to them that I even chased him down in foreign cities. One day, I was on such a mission to Damascus, armed with the authority and commission of the leading priests. About noon, Your Majesty, I was on a road. A light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shone down on me and my companions. We all fell down and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is useless for you to fight against my will. Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get to your feet, for I have appeared to you to, put, to appoint you as my servant and witness. You are to tell the world what you have seen, and I will show you, and, and I will show you in the future. And I will rescue you from both your own people and the Gentiles. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes, so they may turn from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God, then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and, for, and be given a birthplace among God's people who set them apart by faith in me. And so King Agrippa, I obeyed that vision from heaven. I preached first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout all Judea and also to the Gentiles that all must repent of their sins and turn to God and prove that they have changed by the good things they do. Some Jews arrested me in the temple for preaching this, and they tried to kill me. But God has protected me right to this very present time, so I can testify to everyone, from the least to the greatest. I teach nothing except what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and be the first to rise from the dead. And in this way, announce God's light to to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. Suddenly Festus shouted, Paul, you are insane. Too much studying has made you crazy. But Paul replied, I am not insane, most excellent Festus. What I am saying is the sober truth. And King Agrippa knows about these things. I speak boldly, for I am sure these events are all familiar to him, for they were not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Agrippa interrupted him. Do you think you can persuade me to become a Christian so quickly? Paul replied, Well, I quickly or not, I pray to God that both you and everyone here in this audience might become the same as I am except for these chains. Then the king, the governor, Bernice and all the others stood and left. As they went out, they talked it over and agreed. This man hasn't done anything to deserve death or imprisonment. 
And Agrippa said to Festa, Festus, he could have been set free if he hadn't appealed to Caesar. Amen. That's the end of Acts chapter 26. Paul giving an account for himself to um, King Agrippa. Paul talking about how whenever God changes us, our actions should change as well. Our actions should reflect what God has done to us. For Paul, certainly that was very true. Paul went from being a persecutor of the church to actually leading the church, going out there and being a missionary, speaking um, especially to the Gentiles to spread the good news of Jesus. Again, a challenge came with us yesterday about our actions whenever we're speaking. Um, and that this passage on reinforces that. We have that challenge of how our actions speak for us and how our actions have to speak for us every day um, and how whenever we do follow Christ, whenever we are a follower of the way, as it's called at one stage, or a Christian, as King Agrippa puts it there, that you know, it, it changes our outlook in life. It changes how we act, how we think, how we interact with people every day. It, it does change our actions, and our actions do speak. Um, as James put it, uh, faith uh, without actions is dead. And God wants us to have a living faith, a live faith. So what's the challenge for you today? What situation could you possibly be in where your actions could speak, where your actions could say how much you have a faith in God and how much you rely upon him? Think about that. Pray about that. And in the week that lies ahead, maybe you're going to start to go out this week. Maybe you've been shielding, you've been told you can now go outside and meet somebody. Uh, but as you do so, you still need to be responsible. How you do that speaks of your actions. How the rest of us behave, um, our actions speak for us. Do we observe the law, the, the land? Do we observe social distancing? Do we just ignore it and throw it out the window? You know, everything that we do is examined. But may it be examined for the right reasons. May it be examined to show God and the love that he has for this people. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word and the challenges that come with it. Thank you again for this new week. Uh, and as we start again, just help us to be sensible. Help us to consider others. Help us to realise that our actions do speak. And may, those, may what is said by our actions be that you are in control and that you love those who are around us. Lord, for our governments, as they start to look at easing lockdown, give them wisdom um, as they do that, as to how and when and at what sort of time scale. And then help us, Lord, to, to work with them uh, in this challenge. Lord, life is always a challenge, but we thank you that we don't face that challenge alone, but that you're with us every step of the way. So, Heavenly Father, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining me. Um, take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow.